Virginia Sienkiewicz, did I say that correctly? Very well. You are the Lithuanian Commissioner for the Environment, Oceans and Fisheries for the European Commission, right? That's correct. You're from Lithuania, which is a country in the EU, a smaller country in the EU. Biggest and uh, mightiest in the Baltic. What would you suggest that I do if I were in Lithuania? It depends on, on, on the season. You know, Vilnius always doing very well with their Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. So you would, you would definitely have fun. But most importantly is to try local cuisine. Oh. So you have to try the pink soup, which would be matching uh, your jacket, and then Zeppelin, which would definitely make you warm inside. That sounds very Instagrammable. Thank you. As the youngest commissioner, I have to ask you, yeah. do you have to explain things to your older colleagues, like uh, slang or TikTok or how to use a printer? <laughs> no, some of them are, are, are well, well uh, very well advanced, but of course, uh, you know, uh, IT maintenance always breaks the ice. So you are the person that they go to? Not that often. I, I wish they would come more often, but uh, when they have uh, questions, I'm always there. Do you have a favorite colleague, a favorite commissioner? You know, it would be unfair to say I, I like them all. I love all my children, that's yeah, true. Exactly. Are there any that you share pop culture or a specific sense of humor with? Yuta Urtelainen has a great sense of humor and she, she's in this uh, Yuta, me and Kadri Simpson. We are in this end of the line crowd uh, because of the commission's protocol. So the younger you are, you go, you go towards the back, this kind of three of us and we of course talk more often Mm -hmm. while waiting for the handshake like the kids at the back of the bus yeah because that's usually the coolest kids so then yeah do you have any favorite um series or any favorite movies what 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 kind of uh, stuff do you watch political non-political no i try to watch non-political i love the office i've watched it a few a few times who is your favorite character in the office i love probably uh, jim the most but it's uh, it's it's obvious pick but uh, i think you know the way michael transformed was 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 actually excellent and who he become and then you know this uh, this sad goodbye but uh, you know Dwight is also a, a, a cool character. You know. oh, he's super awkward. He's super awkward, but uh, but at the end of the day, if you look uh, at some moments, he was a true friend. Sometimes overdoing that, uh, sometimes not finding his 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 role, but he was he he had uh, you know true feelings and 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 being being a true friend, caring about everyone's uh, security as well. Do you wanna die? Michael Scott, of course, is the most emblematic character of the for the American Office. You cannot learn from books. If you were to look at your, your colleagues and the European institutions in general, is there, is there a character among all your, um, all your colleagues and uh, interlocutors from other institutions? Is there someone where you think to yourself, oh, you're like Michael? <laughs> Not exactly. I would say, you know, uh, we we have actually a lot of Dwight in, in many cases. Dwight's? I would say a lot of Dwight. At, at what level? Uh, at like cabinet level? At IT level? At, at many levels, you know, because first of all, you know, Dwight was a truly devoted fan. Dwight really cared about the rules and order and, and, and safety. It's much more about, uh, about Dwight uh, than about Michael, because Michael was kind of chaotic character who could do things which he wouldn't think of the consequences and politicians usually they pre-estimate consequences are you going to become more of a michael in the future oh we'll 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 see you know i will i will definitely get older and i will have those stories of you know the of the times when i was a commissioner the world was different and much better speaking of the office you know when they had uh, over budget uh, you know the michael uh, he couldn't understand that uh, from their budget people and he asked explain me like i am five why don't you explain this to me like i'm five do you usually explain things like someone's five when i see that uh, you know uh, out of seven times i had no luck explaining it then i try to to, to simplify it how would you explain mm-hmm your job to your children? We talk on on many things, but I'm pretty sure that they think that their dad is taking care of planet's environment and and, and planet's oceans. Um, So they they always have these talks about, you know, how we manage to save the turtles because we don't use uh, a plastic straw, for example, or how we ensure that there are, you know, a larger population of birds if we protect certain areas and and, and, and so on. It sounds a bit like you're describing uh, Captain Planet. Do you remember that old series from the 90s? Absolutely. Captain Planet, he's a hero. (laughs) 
gonna bring pollution down to zero. We have zero pollution uh, ambition. Maybe that comes from those cities. <laughs> Let's talk about the European Green Deal. That's the signature policy of this commission. Can you explain a little bit about it to us? What, what is the European Green Deal in a few sentences? I would say, first of all, you know, it's uh, our goal to reach climate neutrality. Mm -hmm. Then you would ask, why do I need climate neutrality? Why do I need climate neutrality? Yeah, so you will, that we would still have a chance so that the temperature raised does not destroy this, uh, this planet. Uh, so if you really care about, uh, you know, the future of this planet, about the future of people on this planet, um, that's the only way to go, uh, ensuring that we keep uh, the uh, global heating within 1.5 degrees. And how does and the European Green Deal do that? through the different types of policies. But first of all, of course, we focus on the emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's number one. That's something easy to, to account. But secondly, uh, we have to ensure that ecosystems uh, that provide different sort of services, they also are in a great shape. We can be the best students in the class. We can reach full decarbonization of our economy. Uh, we can even go further than that. But if our oceans are not able to, to absorb uh, emissions, if our forests are not capable to do so, and if our soil is degraded, we still bust it. But on top of that, if you, you, know, you don't care about environment and you don't care about climate, you I might... I do, don't worry. I you, really you, do. You, I recycle as well. You might love uh, the, the innovation part uh, about you know, the improved mobility. Um, you might love the innovation part about the uh, electricity generation, renewable energy. What messages should get across to reassure people that we're going to have enough food? We're not going to have to diet. You know, first of all, of course, it all starts with, with, the, with the dialogue uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, getting stakeholders uh, on board is uh, getting also their opinions on board. It's not that, you know... Yes or no. I think they, when they feel listened and when they feel part of that change, it's it's much easier to get them on board. So you're but, playing the long game. You're like, we understand, we hear you. But you cannot go for a short uh, for a short game in, in in new policies. You know, it takes time to to adopt, to implement, to get twenty seven on board. We don't have and, time. Uh, the planet is on fire. You know, if you if you're talking about you know one month or three months. I think that's not uh, a, a big change, but better to have them on board rather than uh, have them arriving uh, on the tractors. Pretty sure they're still going to come on the tractors. A thousand tractors have brought gridlock to the city. What's also uh, crucial when you talk about the food security is looking at the facts and communicating facts uh, straight. So um, we, of course, always have to take stepwise approach and not to harm industry so that the uptake would be possible, uh, administrative capacities would be there, and etc. Thinking of all, all the pieces in the puzzle. But, uh, you know, we waste too much food uh, and it's increasing. We have obesity as an, as an issue uh, across uh, the EU. So, you know, I think we should focus on solving those issues of our overconsumption uh, rather than, you know, inflicting scare of having not enough food. You're a millennial. I'm a millennial still, uh, even though you're younger than me and it's very depressing. Um, how can we get young people to the polls? How do we... Market it better. Yeah, how do we market? Like, what, what's uh, a good that's, calm that's, strategy that's for probably, Europe? That's where I sh am short in and don't have a great advice. Maybe we uh, should make TikTok dances. <laughs> That that can that can work. You know, there are there are different ways of, of, of approaching public. You know, I love, for example, youth dialogues and and, 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 and so on, where, where you speak with young people, answer their, their questions and and do it directly. Even your show, which will be shown on, 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 on YouTube and etc., can help uh, to, to attract the attention. So are you saying that the Schumann show is basically your last big hope to get the European public on board? That's definitely the last mile, yeah. Okay, I accept this responsibility and uh, we will make sure that we get them out to the polls. We'll ensure that you get a thank you letter. I mean, I'd rather money, to be quite honest. Like, you know, comms budget, DG comms budget, that you, would be great. You have to Just apply, to... you have to apply for those, you know. I know, and public but... public procurement and then most yes. likely in three years you will get your grant.
Yeah, in three years. Exactly. Thank you. You are. You know what you're doing now? You're giving the populists more fodder because bureaucracy, lengthy processes. This is this is not what we I want to say. I hope that they're okay? watching, watching the show. We should cut the red tape. Cut the red tape. Give us the money now. We promise we'll do a lovely, uh, a lovely little uh, reel on Instagram and get the youth to the polls. You know what you're doing now. What am I doing now? You're putting the pressure on you, official. Okay, next question. Uh, so what's next for you, Commissioner? Uh, what will you be doing? Are you going to try and run again for von der Leyen 2? I would absolutely love to continue uh, in, in the Commission, but that's you know up for uh, government uh, in Lithuania to decide who they're going to nominate. Well, whatever it is you do next, we wish you a lot of luck and thank you for sitting down with The Schumann Show. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Oh! there would be so much more of a um, passionate, uh, well, why are we using English as our lingua franca now? I well, thought that that would be more. Well, the French presidency would last it not for six months, but for six years, I, I'm pretty sure that, <laughs> they, would that, that they would get there, but it was just too short presidency. Greek basketball is, 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 is always at not as good as Lithuanian level, but still. Okay, I, 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 let's I, take this to Ambiorix. <laughs> We're gonna have to see a Greece versus Lithuania match to settle this. Oh, it, 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 it was just happened in the really? latest, uh, latest World Cup. Oh, who won? Lithuania. <laughs> I'm gonna check that online. <laughs>